Hello students, welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Dr. Sandeep Valia, Head of the Department, University Institute of Tourism and Hospitality Management, Chandigarh University. Today, we are going to discuss the module Immigration Formalities and Procedures at Indian Airports. After completing this module, the students will be able to understand the meaning of immigration, learn about the immigration formalities and procedures at Indian airports for foreigners, about the different visa requirements for different countries, gain an insight about the different types of visas issued to the foreign nationals or officials by the Indian country. You will be knowing about the requirements during the arrival of foreigners at the Indian airports for, from different countries. You will also apprehend the health regulations for leaving and entering into the country. You will also have a decent knowledge about immigration formalities and procedures for Indian passengers leaving India. Let us now take about the introduction and meaning of immigration first. The term immigration refers to the movement of people into a country or the destination which is not a part of their country or of origin or they do not hold any permanent residency or citizenship in order to settle or they may also visit at that destination for accepting any employment assignment on temporary basis. Let us now take about the immigration formalities and procedures at Indian airport. In general, all the nationals including the Indians and or foreigners have to undergo immigration formalities and checks at the time of arrival and departures at all the airports located at the Indian airports. The common practice for the international travelers at the time of arrival in India get the passport stamped from the immigration counter officer. It is duty of the passenger to ensure that his or her passport should have been stamped before leaving the immigration counter at the airport. It is mandatory for all the foreigners to fill arrival cards and the departure cards at the time of departure. The information contains in the arrival cards like the name of the passenger, date of birth, passport number, address in India and flight number, date of arrival or date of boarding, the flight extra. In order to avoid any inconvenience at the destination, it is essential to have a fixed an immigration stamp on the passport of the passenger. In case it is not done by the counter officer, the passengers are advised to contact immediately at the FFRO, FRO or SSP to get it stamped. Foreign nationals who are going to visit the India should carry or possess the valid national passport or any other internationally travel document supporting his or her nationality and identity card bearing a photograph of the foreigner. But in Nepal, in exceptional case, any Nepal national who is going to visit the India, they do not require the passport for visiting in India though they should possess a valid identity card. On the other hand, overseas citizens of India are allowed to visit in India with new passport after cancelling the old passports having lifelong Indian U visa sticker on it. It is not essential to have the nationality of the one country. They are free to acquire nationality of various countries except Bangladesh and Pakistan. He or she is allowed to visit India provided that they should present their life long Indian U visa sticker on the old passport along with the new passport of the recent acquired nationality. Let us now take about the visa requirements. All the passengers from the abroad traveling to India are required to hold a valid international travel document called passport along with 
a valid visa acquired from the Indian mission or Indian embassy office located at their place of country. Different nationals from the abroad has to fill the online application form for obtaining the Indian visa. They shall be issued a visa as per they applied and the information shall be printed like a specific endorsement with the number of visit entries are allowed along with the duration as well. The passengers may also ask for specific endorsement in case of any doubt they may seek clarification from any of the Indian missions abroad. The passengers traveling from Nepal and Bhutan are not supposed to have a visa. However, citizens of Nepal and Bhutan require a visa when entering India from China. However, they must require the same when they will be coming from China. The nationals from the Maldives visiting India for a shorter period of time less than 90 days are exempted from the requirements of visa. In a special case, they may come India after obtaining a valid passport issued by the government of Maldives or any other issuing agency on the behalf of the government of Maldives. They are allowed to visit India for the tourism purpose only. They may come for spending the quality time in India and may visit at the various tourism destinations located across the India. The duration of the visa should not be more than 90 days. If any national wants to stay in India more than 90 days, they have to get a visa for the same. The rules exist differently for diplomats and official visa or passport holders. Overseas Citizen of India They are allowed to visit India with new passport after cancelling the old passports and the sticker starting U visa should be affixed on it. It is not essential to have the nationality of the one country. They are free to acquire nationality of various countries except Bangladesh and Pakistan. He or she is allowed to visit India provided that they should present their the new passport of which they recently got the nationality along with their U visa. Sticker affixed on the old passport. Students, let us now take about the types of visa offered by the Indian government. The first one is E-Visa. It refers to an official document which allows to the foreign traveler to enter into India. Under this type of visa, the nationals are issued the E-Visa after filing the required information and making the payments by a credit card like MasterCard, Visa card, etc. There is a difference between e-visa and visa on arrival. The first one is issued after applying online and making the payment of the prescribed fees. On the other hand, visa on arrivals refer to the visa that is issued to the foreign nationals when they reach India. The next one is e-tourist visa that is e-tv. This type of visa is issued to the tourist after filling the online application form after paying the prescribed fees online. Eligibility of the nationals All the foreign nationals are eligible to enter India with a valid passport if they are coming to India with the sole purpose of visiting India for medical purposes, enjoyment and recreation to meet their friends and relatives, any educational trip or international tourists. They should possess the passport which should have at least 6 months validity from the date of arrival. There should be at least 2 pages left blank for immigration stamp and they should also possess inward journey ticket and sufficient funds to spend in India. Citizens from the Pakistan are advised to apply for the visa through regular visa at Indian mission. This type of visa is not issued to those who are false under the category of diplomats or officials. Not endorsed to any members on parents or spouse passport, each and every member has to apply and possess separately. 
it is not given to those nationals who carries the international travel documents. The next is validity. 30 days is the validity if this type of visa from the date of arrival of the foreigners and restrict them to visit only two times in a calendar year. It is issued for visiting Indian only once and in case it is non-extendable or convertible and the nationals are not allowed to pay visit at the protected or restricted areas like cantonment areas, military areas, wildlife sanctuaries or to the tribal districts. Next is the entry. Once the visa application is approved and it is printed and issued to the concerned during the visit in India, the biometric information of the travelers should be captured at immigration counter at that airport. It allows to travelers to entry through nine designated airports located in India like Chennai, Delhi, Bangalore, Goa, Hyderabad, Trivandrum, Cochin, Mumbai and Kolkata. However, the nationals from the abroad may take exit from any of the immigration check post. It is not necessary to exit from the same airport from which they have arrived. Travelers can enter through Ahmedabad, Gaya, Amritsar, Jaipur, Lucknow, Varanasi and Trichy till June 2016. The various countries' nationals are allowed to receive the e-tourist visa and visit India for the purpose of tourism. The government of India issues the following visas to the foreign nationals or the officials. These are e-visa, business visa, work visa or employment visa, entry visa, emergency or exigency visa, missionaries visa, Journalist visa, permit to re-enter within two months, medical visa, tourist and transit visa, intern visa, film visa, visa for attending conferences, seminars, diplomatic visa, student visa and research visa. Let us now discuss about the requirements during arrival of foreigners at the Indian airports. At the time of the arrivals, all the passengers to undergo immigration check at the Indian airports. It is mandatory requirement to carry out the immigration checkout at the airports by the immigration counter or the officers and no foreign officials are exempted for the same. The travelers who reached at the Indian airports are asked to fill their personal and travel related information in the arrival card that is also known as disembarkation card available at the FF RO counter or the immigration counter. The information they need to fill includes their age, the gender, place of and date of birth, nationality and permanent address. The immigration check includes the functions of checking the validity of the passport, visa, arrival card, saving the information in the computer in order to make the database of the foreigners traveling or visiting India filing the field arrival card and stamping of passport of the foreigners. The nationals from the Pakistan other than diplomats or non-diplomats and SARC visa exemption sticker and SAU visa are required to carry a visa application form with duplicate copies which will be issued in addition to regular visa on their passport by the Indian mission concerned. The form is being presented by the traveller at the immigration check post and they are given a regular residential permit and asked to them to report to FRO or concerned police station where they are going to stay during their visit. Foreigners or the travellers holding PIO cards. The PIO holders can come to India provided that it should be submitted along with the new valid passport. However, all the travelers coming to India are suggested to get the PIO cards and their new foreign passports endorsed by the competent authority in order to avoid any inconvenience during their visit and stay.
and for Pakistan nationals? In the case of the Pakistani nationals other than those who are travelling on diplomatic visa for any assignment or non-diplomatic visa they are required to have SARC visa exemption sticker and SAU visa and also need to carry a visa application form in duplicate which will be issued in addition to regular visa on their passport by the Indian mission concerned in the Pakistan. The same shall be presented by them at the immigration check post and they shall be issued regular residential permit. After getting the regular residential permit, they are required to report at the FRO or the concerned police station in their places of stay within 24 hours unless and until they are not officially exempted from police reporting. The next is passengers or nationals of SAR countries. The nationals under SAR countries like Bangladesh, Bhutan, Afghanistan, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Maldives and Pakistan are categorized as Group A. It includes the government officials, the dignitaries, officials of SAC secretariat, participants of SAC meetings and seminars and its various regional centers who are entering India under SAC visa exemption scheme are not liable to get the visa and need not to carry police reporting. But the nationals from Afghanistan are provided temporary residential permit and with the direction get them registered within 14 days with the concerned FRRO, FRO of their place or at the destination of their stay. It is a common advice to every nationals of any countries that they must ensure that they enter India only after an immigration stamp with the correct date if affixed on their valid passport by the immigration counter officer. On the contrary, foreigners possessing or carrying a valid PIO person of Indian origin card or OCI overseas citizen of Indian card along with their valid national passport are free to enter without holding any visa separately. But it is mandatory for all the foreigners holding official citizen of India is to hold a valid passport bearing the OCI U visa sticker. In case of Nepali citizens, nationals who are traveling and entering India by land or air do not require even a passport or a visa. They have to carry only a valid identity card or proof or documents of the proof of their citizenship of the Nepal. Nepalese passport issued by the Nepalese External Affairs Department. Citizenship certificate issued by the competent authority of the Nepalese government. The voter cards issued by the competent authority like Election Commission of Nepal. Limited validity photo identity certificate issued by Nepalese government. Student identity card whose age is between 10 to 18 may get it from the principal of the school but if they are traveling with their parents should possess a valid travel document except who are under the age of 10 years. But if any citizen is coming to India from other than Nepal, they must be in possession of a valid passport and citizens should also possess a valid visa as well as if he or she is entering India from China. In case of Bhutanese passengers, the citizens who belongs to Bhopal are required the following documents to enter to India by the air route. They are not required to have a valid passport and visa. However, they are required any one of the following identity proof documents to support their citizenship of the Bhutan. Bhutanese passport issued by the Ministry of External Affairs, Bhutan, citizenship certificate of Bhutanese. Voter card issued by the Election Commission of Bhutan. Limited validity photo identity certificate issued by Royal Bhutanese Mission in India when deemed necessary. Student identity card whose age is between 10 to 18 years may get it from the principal of the school. But if they are traveling with their parents should possess a valid travel document except 
who are under the age of 10 years. They should carry a valid passport if they are entering India from any country other than Bhutan. Moreover, if they are entering India from the China, it is compulsory to have a valid passport along with visa. Dear students, let us now talk about health regulations for entering to India when the foreign nationals or even Indian reached at the Indian airport, they are required to produce a vaccination certificate. At the time of arrival at the Indian airport, it is applicable to everyone whether they are coming by air or through sea. Nobody is allowed to enter India without showing a vaccination certificate of yellow fever. If not able to submit, they will have to ask to stay isolated for the period of six days at least. He or she reach at the Indian airport within six days of departure or transit from a yellow fever prevalent area. He or she has traveled on a ship which has started his journey from or transit at any point of time where yellow fever is prevalent at that area or country within 30 days of its arrival in India, provided the ship has not disinfected and has followed the health norms and procedures laid by World Health Organizations. Countries regarded as yellow fever infected countries. There are some of the following countries which are considered as yellow fever endemic. These countries include, there are certain countries from the Africa which are considered as yellow fever like Cameroon, Angola, Burkina Faso, Benin, Burundi, Cameroon and many more. And a few of them from the South America also like Brazil, French Guiana, Venezuela and Peru. Thus. Vaccination certificate of 10 years starting 10 days from the date of vaccination should be as per the conformity of model laid down by World Health Organization. Travelers who passed through the yellow fever endemic area or countries are required to produce a certificate during the past 6 days to obtain the visa and is remarked on the foreign passport that the yellow fever vaccination certificate is checked and stands valid. Persons who are exempted from production of vaccination certificate. The following mentioned persons or travelers or foreigners are exempted from the submission of yellow fever vaccination certificate. This includes the infants whose age is below 6 months. Anybody who is suffering from serious or chronic illness and has a poor recovery. This vaccination is exempted for those passengers who are suffering from serious illness. If the crew members of an aircraft or ship would remain within the airport premises during the halt or transit and the halt officer is also satisfied on the same line, they are also exempted from this type of vaccination certificate. In case of leaving India, there are as such no health check requirements or rules and regulations are followed on passengers in India. The passengers are only advised to get themselves vaccinated if they are going to travel yellow fever endemic countries or the regions. They are also suggested to get it done and avail the certificate also as precautionary measure before they leave. The government of India and the government of Bangladesh has come into administrative arrangement for the health control of air, sea and land as well. Under this health agreement pertaining to air, land and sea travel, any passenger arrives either of agreement of countries without touching any other en route are exempted from all the health checkups but they touched any en route or arrives there and then will come either of agreement countries shall not be exempted from all the health checkups. Let us now discuss about the immigration formalities and procedures for Indian passengers at the Indian airports. Indian passengers who are traveling to foreign should have a valid passport along with visa 
travel authority to travel for the destination country. But there are certain countries which gives exemption to Indian passengers to offer visa on arrival services. There are certain countries prescribed or insist on the minimum period of the passport for the Indian travelers visiting abroad and the same may be got from the concerned embassy or travel agent. Indian travelers who hold the immigration check not required category of passports are required to obtain a POE clearance from the Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs for certain destinations if traveling on the employment or on the work visa. Identity documents required for Indian citizens going to or coming from Nepal by air includes the Indian travelers should possess a valid national passport. They should possess the photo identity card issued by the government of India or the state government or the Union Territory Administration in, of India to their employees or election identity card issued by the Election Commission of India. They should have emergency certificates issued by the Embassy of India situated at Kathmandu, photo identity certificate issued by Embassy of India at Kathmandu. Travelers whose age is more than 65 years are exempted from the requirement of the above mentioned documents. However, they should possess certain documents in support of their age and their address like pen card, Aadhaar card, ration card. The children who are in the age of between 15 to 17 years are allowed to visit in Nepal on the production of a valid identity card duly signed and issued by the principal of the school. In case of a family consisting of husband, wife and their children and parents visiting all together, it is not necessary for all the members having the approved identification documents mentioned earlier. There may be only one person who might have hold a valid approved identification document for traveling to Nepal. However, the other family members may possess other identity cards like Aadhaar cards, driving license, ration card or PAN card. Dear students, let us now summarize what we have discussed in this module. As we know that the immigration refers to the movement of people into a country or the destination which is not a part of the country of origin or they do not hold any permanent residency or citizenship in order to settle or they may also visit at that destination for accepting any employment assignment on temporary basis. The common practice for the international travelers at the time of arrival in India get the passport stamped from the immigration counter officer. It is duty of the passenger to ensure that his or her passport should be stamped before leaving the immigration counter at the airport. As it is mandatory for all the foreigners to fill arrival cards and the departure cards at the time of arrival or to the departure from the country. The information contains in the arrival cards like their basic details about their name, date of birth, passport number and address or the flight number. In order to avoid any inconvenience at the destination, it is essential to have a fixed an immigration stamp on the passenger passport. In case it is not done by the counter officer, the passengers are advised to contact immediately at the FRRO or FRO or SSP to get these stamped. All the passengers from the abroad traveling to India are required to hold a valid international travel document called passport along with a valid visa acquired from the Indian embassy office located at their place of their country. Government of India issues the various type of visas to the foreign nationals or officials for completing the basic requirements of entering into India. With these words, I sum up this module. Thank you.